That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Swan Song, the directorial debut of Benjamin Cleary, uh, not the uh, Udo Kier star, which released earlier this year, because there are two films in 2021 called Swan Song. Uh, Speaking of that Udo Kier film, a cast member from that film had nasty messages, private messages to me about us dragging his movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't very good. Um, which, if you want to hear about, it's on one of the podcast episodes. I couldn't tell you which one, though. Anyway, no. sorry. Couldn't be bothered. Uh, this <laughs> played at the 2021 AFI Film Festival uh, and is going to be available for streaming on Apple TV December t- 17th, 2021. Uh, notably, Benjamin Cleary, it's his debut. Uh, he won an Oscar for his 2016 short, Stutterer. Oh, <laughs> stutter, Stutterer. Uh I watched the trailer for this. And refused to sit through the film. It, I didn't refuse. It's just, you know, I have a lot on my plate. Very busy, very important. So in a so, sort of a cachet of things to do, I elected not to watch this film. Well, but I it did. sounds like um, I made a good decision. I do know the full story, so I'm going to give the basic plot. Mm-hmm. Okay, it revolves around a man played by Mahershala Ali. His name's Cameron. He's an advertising artist. Cameron finds out he has a terminal illness... He's married and has a kid. Married to a woman named Poppy, played by Naomi Harris. They're, of course, uh, reuniting after starring in Moonlight together. So Cameron finds out he has a terminal illness, but chooses not to tell his wife. And instead seeks out um, services from a doctor played by Glenn Close. And this doctor runs sort of like an experimental like hospice where... They are cloning people with the idea that, like, you can hide your terminal illness from your loved ones, go to hospice, they will clone a version of you that will live out the rest of your life unbeknownst to your loved ones. So Cameron decides to do that. And he's the third person to do so. So it's very experimental. It culminates with. Cameron saying that before we execute this for sure, I need to say goodbye to my family. So he goes and re- and at the front step of his house, he collapses. He's being monitored, so they know he's collapsed. They scoop his ass up, bring him back to the facility. But because he never got to say goodbye, he sneaks out of the facility. At this point, his clone is already in action, mm-hmm. like in the house. So Cameron sneaks back into the house The clone catches him and basically says, like, do what you got to do. So the clone goes and sits his ass down somewhere while Cameron says his goodbyes to his wife and child, which basically is him saying, like, I love you so much. And then he leaves the end. Yeah, there you go. Uh, A film that has a myriad of ethical and moral dilemmas and fails to correctly address any of those and instead... Yeah, be- embracing this schmaltzy picture perfect family <laughs> because when you were just explaining it to me in great detail or in greater detail I had so many questions and you had no answers so because the film doesn't posit <laughs> they it paints this syrupy portrait of this couple played by uh, Mahershala Ali and Naomi Harris that is it it really um negates any kind of characterization for either of them. So Mahershala Ali was just nominated for a Golden Globe and his performance, because he, he is doing... For this movie? For this movie. Oh, wow. He is doing dual work. Uh, he's playing two characters because while Cameron is... Um, they're doing you know a memory exchange upload. For, like Lindsay Lohan in... A, what's the movie where she played twins? I Know Who Killed Me? No, like when she was little. Isn't she? Oh, the, the Parent Trap. The Parent Trap. That's a remake. Uh, you know. And, That's a remake. Yes. Oh. Uh, what's her name? Uh, is in the original from Saved by the Bell. Uh, what? The teacher in Saved by the Bell. What's her name? Mm. There's a female. I don't even recall a teacher in Saved by the Bell. I'm gonna have to come back to that to remember that name. Um, oh, I can look it up while you. Keep Mills. Talking. Haley Mills. Oh. Uh, is in the original. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so he's playing two characters because while Cameron's clone, who's called Jack, while in transit. It, the the process is supposed to work where when they're transplanted into the family, the clone will have the memory of its nature as a clone or race. So it's like seamless. So there's kind of some problems in how this transition happens here. To make um, Cameron feel better, uh, Glenn Close introduces him to the last person that underwent this, uh, a woman named Kate, a real estate broker that's played by Aquafina. So he meets the clone who has no idea she's a clone and then he spends most of his time kind of making this makeshift friendship with 
the dying Aquafina who's laid up in this hospice, which seems also like a more interesting aspect, like this isolation of having to kind of die while your family's off, has no idea about it and how horrible that seems as well. Um, and, and just the fact that it has to be kept secret from the family, it drove me crazy that um, Poppy has really no say in this matter when what would be interesting is for her, what if, it, there are all the what ifs in this narrative and this possibility of what if she knew and what if she said, I don't want to live with this clone. Right. Maybe I want to say goodbye to you. It also it tries to um, supplant those kind of questions with the fact that Poppy had a twin brother named Andre, who we meet in flashbacks, who died in a motorcycle accident. And because of that, she kind of retreated into herself and they they this couple drifted apart because of her mourning period, which makes that even worse, though. <laughs> like, yes, it would be compounded by knowing her husband's going to die, but also I think would have been a little bit more poignant in knowing, like, oh, if she, she hadn't kind of extracted herself from the marriage emotionally, how much time she wasted with her husband in these last days they could have spent together. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, hearing you talk about it, I thought there there are a lot of interesting, like, sort of ethical debates that could occur, but it sounds like the film doesn't really address those at all. And No, and his performance is fine. He's, he's doing all the things that you expect and doing them very well. It just, there's so many longing, these passages of longing stares, and but also really doesn't drive any kind of real characterization. Like, I don't know why this person, why this seems so precious this this love that these two people have that it needs to be untouched by mortality and also how long is this clone supposed to last that like what what if there's a malfunction there are again there are all these what ifs in this scenario that are innately more interesting than whatever this film is doing uh which you know has earned a lot of raves since it played at afi but you know it to me this felt very stilted it feels like a short film scenario that it, it feels like it should have been a short film because then it doesn't have to kind of address all of those issues and then causes one to ponder and think about it afterwards. Well, I, if you find out you're dying, I don't need a clone. Okay. Uh, Do you want a clone of me? Oh, my God. Uh, I think it is actually very well shot uh, by Masanabu uh, Takanayagi, who's filmed several uh, features for Scott Cooper, um, and as well as a couple other films that uh, I think are very well done. Uh, but... Yeah, that, but besides that, I don't. I forget who says that. If all you have to say about a film is how good it looks, it must be a very dull film. Uh, I I thought this was a very tedious exercise, and it really wastes the talents of a pretty formidable cast. I mean, Glenn Close really has nothing to do. When you have your doctor telling you you have to keep the top secret from your family that you're dying, it, it just it also seems highly illegal that this would be happening. And I think there's somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, based on where this secret hospice is going on. There are a lot of interesting bits of technology in what seems like the near future. Like the two, the couple has a meet cute over this chocolate bar. This robot sells them. I think the cars that the, the these cars without drivers are transporting them around. I think all of that looks really cool. They're being monitored through um, cameras in their contact lenses. All of that seems great. It just I, how does Glenn Close look? I think you, you didn't watch this movie, but I did pause it to show you her hair. She looks that is you did yeah, because I was like, look at Glenn's hair in this. It's, it looks terrible. Oh, I don't remember. I do really like her, but again, her and Aquafina is supposedly kind of showing this maudlin kind of comedic effect that I, I also doesn't. I don't think works very well. But what would you give this film? I would give it two out of five. I thought it was. I thought it was. Quite pretty difficult to get through and uh, quite aggravating. Do you have anything else? No. Uh, don't forget we have a podcast. Yeah, we sure do. The information is in the description below. Mm -hmm. I think our podcast is good. Yeah, it's Because we talk at length about a bunch of random shit. Mm -hmm. And we need more people to listen. Because they deserve it. All right, bye. 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 <laughs>